Hello, County. Wes Rosenberg here is your guest, covering people in the life in Milwaukee, in lives in Milwaukee County. Um, watching us live is at hellocounty.com, or you can uh, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Hello County, uh, to catch previous interviews and conversations that we've had in the past. Um, if you are on hellocounty.com, uh, Text in the chat. Let us know where you're from. Let us know uh, you got something you want to talk about. We'll put it up there and we'll discuss it right online here uh, and have a discussion with you. So it's all good stuff. Um, we're going to go to the fix it segment right now, which is not going to be very long because we're running out of time. But um, do you have something you would like to uh, ask or do you have a customer yeah. asked or something? Yeah. First and foremost... <laughs> My house is weird. It used to be a duplex, but both sides weren't built at once. Uh, this refers to the basement. Um, and so there's an old side and a new side yep. of the basement. Uh, the old side is the original house built in 20, uh, 1920. Um, this side of the house uh, houses the uh, bullets for both our heat and another for hot water. Okay. Uh, there's a trench thing that goes around all four walls. The new side was added in the 60s, and the water main comes in from here and goes through the wall to the old side. Um, the old side is about six inches higher than the new side. And a... Oh, my gosh. This is almost illiterate and so poorly written. I can't, this is getting tough. I can't understand what he's saying. But what he's getting at is that there's about an inch of water in front of the stairs on the new side that keeps coming back uh, over the last several days. It's not raining. I checked for leaking pipes, but there aren't any. I used a shop vac on the trenches around the old side, thinking that it was flowing, overflowing and running down into the new side where the door is. It's not. I think it's coming from under the wall, possibly the leak between the trench on the old side and the wall on the new side. The new side doesn't have trenches. This is like one of those, um, those logic problems that you see on the SATs. I like, know I'm going with this uh, already. <laughs> oh, you, you're, you're following good. Yeah, I'm following very closely. I want to emphasize that I am broke, very broke. Don't tell me to call someone. Help me out. <laughs> so um, what I think is going on there, I think it's probably groundwater. Now we have to identify the difference between groundwater and is it potable water where there's maybe a leak on the water service? Yeah. A um, couple ways to, you can do that is... Um, Taste it. No, yeah, put no. your tongue on a concrete floor. <laughs> um, no, what I would do is um, I would try to get the house as quiet as possible and maybe use a screwdriver. Take the butt of the screwdriver, the, the blunt end. Okay. Stick that in my ear. The best I, I know it sounds kind of this is it's like a tuning fork you know it's listen. like a tuning fork now you don't have a lot of money so that's why I'm telling you to do this this is this is along those these are cheap ways of result of yeah identif making identification then you take the other end of the the, uh, the screwdriver and put that against the metal pipe and just listen it sounds like a freight train or the ocean let's say you probably have a leak on the water service under the floor. So you're putting against the potable uh, water service pipe. Yeah, coming yeah, yeah coming, coming out of the meter. That. Okay. Then I would shut the valve off of the water coming in, just temporarily. Yeah. See if you hear the same thing, or is that change stopped? It'll stop. Yeah. You won't hear it anymore. And I mean, I guess you should even see it on the water meter, right? If there's water flow. No. Oh. If it was before the meter, you wouldn't well, see it. Well, yeah. But another thing you could do, too, is if you wanted to make a purchase, you can buy these little containers of, um, uh, they sell them at Walmart, testing your water for your swimming pool. Oh, yeah. And then what I would do is I would take, take a couple of them tabs, and I would check the pH, okay. and um, I would check the pH of the water. Yep. And I would also check um, the pH of, the, of, of let's say... Um, rain yeah and uh, also to see if there's any chlorine in it or fluoride okay checking the fluoride if there's fluoride in that water it's probably water potable water 
it's probably potable water. So yeah. these are a couple different things. Now, let's just pretend we found out that um, there's no fluoride in it. There's no noise on it. So we're assuming now it's groundwater. Okay. Um, the new piece of property you had put in should actually have drain tile that has been put in instead of a little trench around the outside, like you're saying on the old part of the building. So like a old versus new way of managing water? The old water. way was the wrong way too. Tr the trench? Or the, the trench. Th yeah. It was the wrong way as well, but we're living with it. Oh, okay. It's there. We don't have a lot of money. Drain tiles are, but in general, drain tiles are the preferred way of right. dealing with this. So, and then what you could do if you never had this problem before, that's another thing. I was just talking with someone else recently about this. Yeah. They said, yeah, well, it's never happened before. Well, and then everything was working correctly before it started happening, whatever that was. Yeah. Um, so everything happened, everything was normal and working before, but now things have changed. What has changed? Yeah. We have to ask, what has changed? Why is it different? Um, this makes so, me think it's the water pipe rather than the groundwater because he said it hasn't been raining and I don't know why it would suddenly, water would be leaking in all of a sudden. Well, what I'm thinking is if possibly if he could somehow open up the corners of the floor and, and maybe jam something through the drain. I'm talking cheap now jamming something through the drain tile like a garden hose maybe that um the drain tile was accepting water in but because of the soil was sandy soil was flowing with the water and plugging up the drain tile and now the drain tiles plugged and that's why you're getting water in the house because it can't drain correctly nice you may need further stuff like a camera down there where you got to spend some money but I also took in consideration on your answer to your question of kind of do-it-yourself checking first before you right. call on a professional and start spending money. Yeah. Does that make sense? I like it. Yeah. So. Thank you, uh, Dr. Wes. <laughs> I will go home and implement these troubleshooting uh, strategies post-haste. Oh, is this really your house? No. Oh. I, um, I was reading it, but I... I, I thought you were. Yeah. Yeah, and you know what? You know, you tease me, Dr. West, and all that business. Drain that, surgeon. Drain surgeon. I mean, brain, drain surgeon. Um, that you tease me about that and say, like, I'm a know it all kind of thing or something like that. And that's not the case, but I've gotten called to goofy jobs like this many yeah, times. I believe it. And I got to start someplace. Yeah. So I start trying to eliminate, I, I try to start eliminating uh, the simple stuff. I always go from cheapest to most expensive. Right. Um, you know, I can start breaking up floors and everything, and you find out it's oh, it's uh, the kids are overflowing the bathtub upstairs when they're playing in it when they take a bath, and it slips through the ceiling and falls to the floor, and now it's a pile on the floor. But I just broke up all the floor, you know. So you gotta identify and break this stuff down. Yeah. And you always try to find well, what's the cheapest way to do this, or how it's the cheapest way I can do this test to eliminate this from the equation of all the things it could be. And that's how I attempt going about these things. Um, I like it. So, so that's why when you were talking about this, I already got an idea. Uh, okay. I kind of knew, okay, how in the heck can we do this, keep the price down without breaking up floors, and still get the answers I'm looking for to help determine for this customer. I appreciate that. I remember I had some... Uh some sort of leak uh, that would happen when I flush the toilet would kind of come down. You'd see some water uh, coming down like the main pipe in the basement. Um, and I called someone and he was kind of looking at it, thinking about it. And he's like, you know, we might have to cut into the plaster uh, to, to take a look at the pipe as it's going down through the, you know, the ground floor and stuff to see if there's a leak he's like the pipe could be rusted it's like a you know it's a hundred year old uh sure. cast iron pipe but then he's like he left and later he texted me he's like you know what before we do that i have another idea i'm just gonna check the seal around the the toilet and that was it yeah see 
So. And, you know, a lot of times, too, we get called in to fix a leak that's on the second floor coming through the ceiling. Yeah, we're going to break up the floor. We're going to break up the ceiling right there where the big ring is. We never do that. What we do is I usually do is I pull out a tape measure and I start measuring the, where that spot is on the ceiling and then transfer that measurement to the second floor and find out, oh, you know what? And what gets hairy is if it's near the bathtub or the toilet. Is it the bathtub drain or is it the, the, the toilet drain? And we don't start breaking up ceilings yet. A lot of times we'll measure that out and say, you know what, I think it's the bathtub. So then what I do is then, uh, let's just pretend I thought it was the bathtub. Then I want them to identify and I start telling the, the customer to start developing a science project and I put some, some, some things on it. Yeah. Like for example, um, was the drain leaking? Well, what happened before? Why did it start leaking? Was it... Uh, were the kids taking a bath? Was it mom washing the kids in the tub? Was it someone taking a shower? All these things. And then what we do is and then we go down these different avenues of what the heck was the problem. So one of the tests that we do, let's say, let's say we thought it was the bathtub. Okay? See this leak? We think it's the bathtub. So what we do is we, um, fill, up the, we fill up the tub with water. Um, and I try to get the water from a different source, maybe picturing it in from the bathroom sink, filling a pitcher or filling water and filling up the tub, get so much water in the tub. And what we do is we, um, we just get so much water in the tub and then we just let it sit there. Now, is that telling me that the strainer that the water flows through to drain away is the strainer leaking? That's going to tell me that by letting the water sit. And then let's say, no, nothing happened. We waited a couple minutes. We don't hear anything. We don't see anything getting wet, this, that, and the other thing. Then we say, okay, now let's drain it. Now let's see if it's the waste piping after the strainer. And then we say, okay, nothing happened. And then what we do is we work our way up the tub. Now we check the waste and overflow that's on the tub, that little... We take, we take a pitcher of water and we pour it over the tub. We see anything. Nope, we don't see anything. Okay, now we get a new pitcher of water and we go to the next thing, the shower valve handle. We take a pitcher and we pour it across that, have it dribble down the wall. Yep, I see something now. Oh, so the shower valve plate is leaking. Or we find out it's coming through the tile where the tub meets the, the wall. Try to determine that. And then, or nothing happens at all, then we go up to the spout up above and we pour it on the ceiling all the way from the top all the way down and see where it comes out. You know what I mean? So we take, we take different, different steps, one step at a time. And that was a lot, that little science project of doing that was, it took, was a lot cheaper and it didn't cause the customer financial damage and ripping open ceilings and having to patch ceilings and maybe not find nothing. Or wouldn't it be cheaper to, if we don't know if it's the toilet, but pull the toilet, put a new wax ring down, inspect it underneath the toilet, see what's going on there, put the toilet back down. Let's say it costs you a hundred bucks. I don't know. To pull the toilet and put it back down with a new wax ring. That's a heck of a lot cheaper than opening up a wall yeah. to find out the problem is not there. And now you got a bunch of open holes in the walls. Especially if it's original plaster and... Yeah, plaster and laugh. Yeah, and then you got to then you got to fudge work that in there that you're not going to use plaster when you patch it. You're probably going to use a chunk of drywall. Lame, you know. Well, thank you, Doctor Wes, and uh, <laughs> drain surgeon, <laughs> Doctor Wes, comma DS yeah. uh, for uh, drain surgeon. Yeah. Um, yeah, my, my dad had a hair lip, and he told me he wanted me to be a brain surgeon. I thought he said drain surgeon, <clears throat> so I became a plumber. <laughs> um, who, do we got, who do we got tomorrow? Okay, let's see what we got tomorrow. We got um, two minutes. Yeah, oh, I missed a phone call here, too. Um, let me see here. Uh, Deb. Uh, we have Debs on tomorrow. 
Um, the question of the day, I'm not going to give away that. No, I'm not going to. Um, cultural leaders, I'm assuming that this is her interview with uh, uh, cultural leader Reggie Jackson. Is that the correct? Um, I have to go back to another page to find out exactly about... Uh, so he's an independent researcher. With false, with, with false um, data. False data? No, I think, he's, I think he's legit. No. He does a lot of... He has a lot of um, expertise on kind of segregation in the Milwaukee area. He's sort of interested in the history of segregation in the area. And he had a consulting firm for a while... Uh, on sort of nurturing diversity in organizations and things, but he has this interest in kind of Milwaukee history and um, the African American experience, uh, the people living here. So I think it'll be an interesting conversation. I um, also think he was he was also in the Navy uh, for a while uh, early in his early in his life. Um, so always got the military connection there. But I think that'll be good. And we'll have him on tomorrow with Deb. Okay, and then what's happening on Friday? Friday we got Tommy Medro, and he's also a Navy vet. He's going to talk about mental health, Team Hawkeye, his uh, his organization. He's trying to get off the ground to connect service members with PTSD and other mental health problems with uh, trained service animals. You know, man, I can't believe since I've joined this show how I didn't really identify mental illness that I didn't know it was such a big issue I was unconscious to it and what has also uh, made me more sensitive to the subject matter is that there's a lot of mental illness in normal people too maybe things that we identified as quirks or idiosyncrasies or even not not even just mental illness so much as negative experiences in people's lives and how those uh, affect them you know whether it's manipulating and change their mental thinking yeah process um, and how they may not be normal cope with problems and uh, deal with adversity yeah so it's all good stuff. It'll be a good show tomorrow. Deb will do a great job on it, I'm sure. So um, we're signing out right now. Hello County is signing out right now, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Stay tuned.